Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be putting some finishing touches on this entryway, some gate latches, and then we're going to hang these cutouts on the braces right here. If you haven't seen the previous videos of this project, in the description there will be links of all the videos. So instead of just welding this right to this, we're actually going to be raising it off the fence a little bit. That way there's some dimension to it. Like it looks kind of like it's floating out here or it looks kind of 3D or whatever you want to call it. I think it's going to look real nice. I'm going to put one there and one there. And on these gates, we're going to be putting a beefy stop to keep these from swinging because after we grease these things, these gates will swing wherever it's windy. You wouldn't think because these things are nice and heavy. Like it takes some, you know, like you can just tell there's weight to them, which I actually like. I don't mind, but um, I mean, they're not hard to move, obviously. Like I said, the wind will move them, but those greasable hinges are legit. Some people have asked me where I got these hinges. I got these from railroad yard i think but if you are in the central oklahoma area stillwater oklahoma area railroad yard and stillwater still both carry these types of hinges uh, they got all different sizes made to go over two and seven eighths made to go over two and three eighths i seen some real big ones in stillwater still the other day for like i don't know four inch or six inch it was huge whatever it was so that's where i got those but i have made my own hinges before like on smaller gates i carry some three quarter and some seven eighths rod and some pipe to, to slide over. And I've, I've made my own a bunch, but the nice thing about these is they come with grease certs, which a guy could always do that to them also, but sometimes it's hard to make them yourselves whenever they just, everything's already ready. It's worth the money versus the time to just buy them, especially whenever you're doing a project like this. Anyway, that's the first thing, hang this bad boy. Got the brands hung. Now, 
time to focus on this. I've been studying it a little bit. I want, whenever the gates are closed like this, we're gonna put our apparatus back here. That way from the road, you can't even see it. And then I'm gonna put this piece right here. And then my rod that's gonna go inside, whenever it's closed, whenever the pin is hitting the ground, and then maybe a count on it going in the ground just a little bit, I'm gonna put a point on it so it'll kind of stick in the ground. But then I'm gonna bend it like this. So that bend will be hidden behind this. So from the road, you won't be able to see it is the idea. And then whenever they sling this open, so it'll stay over there, they can just put it down. And I've measured over there uh, where the ground is right now. It might be sticking up a little bit, but um, it won't be as big a deal because you know, don't worry about so much what it looks like whenever it's open. But we've been back and forth. Me and the landowner have been back and forth about what to do about latches and we just don't wanna, we didn't wanna do hardly anything to these gates just cause they look, they're like beefy and clean without anything. And if the wind's not blowing like right now, I mean, it looks good with, you know, nothing but like a chain going around it. But you know, here in Oklahoma, it gets pretty windy. So we really do need something. So I figured just a beefy rod going in the ground ought to be sufficient and not look too janky. What keeps all this from looking too janky is the beefiness, I think. You know, nothing's flimsy, everything's there. You know, it's solid, it's not gonna move. And so that's why I wanted to go with something beefy when it comes to this right here. Now I gotta cut some rod. So the guy that actually got me my first pipeline job, his name is Michael. He taught me this right here, uh, whenever burning sucker rod or cold roll, he taught me to keep your heat on the inside of your bend, like this piece, I'm gonna be bending this way. I'm gonna be coming this way with it. So he said, keep your heat right here and it won't split on the outside as bad. You know, you've probably seen, if you've been around welding, if you haven't, you may not have, but a lot of times whenever you bend sucker rod, if you're heating it all up, it'll kind of crack out here on the outside because you're because you're loosening up all them molecules. I guess, I'm not a scientist. All I know is you're loosening it up. So you're loosening up and you're bending it so it can crack back there. So what he taught me was to keep my heat right here. On something this big, I still like heat it up all the way around, but whenever I go to bend it, I'll keep my heat right here on the inside and on the bottom, but I won't put any out there. I won't put any direct heat back there. I'll try to keep very minimal back there on some of this size. This is uh, seven eighths, I believe.
works like a charm and you don't even hardly notice it. Doesn't take away from the gate, I don't think. That one there's locked down. Gates still look beefy, still look good. Mm -hmm. I'm thoroughly pleased. Thoroughly pleased. That'll keep the wind from blowing her around, won't it? Yeah, buddy. Just so y'all know, look what Karen's doing today. not working or mousing or inspecting any welds yeah you didn't show up for work today i bet people aren't too happy about that they were kind of looking forward to seeing you kind of worthless please excuse the shades i might have got something in my eye a piece of metal and i just got it taken out this morning so she's still a little light sensitive which brings me to my advice this week which is take care of your body wear your eye protection which i was i was actually wearing those ski goggle looking things that you may have seen me wear in previous videos and i still managed to get a piece of metal in my eye story of my life i've been to the eye doctor more times than i care to count or admit i also wanted to mention real quick do not wait do not hope that this piece of metal that you just got in your eye is going to work itself out overnight because from my experience nine times out of ten it's not going to work itself out the one thing different from metal getting in, your, getting in your eyes, especially when it comes to grinding, you know, being a welder and you're grinding, is that metal is hot usually whenever it gets in your eye, so it sticks in there and it stays, versus like somebody working with wood or getting dust in their eye. Wood, grass, or dirt is gonna work out a little easier most likely than metal. So when it comes to being a welder, do not waste any time. And I don't mean like necessarily right when it gets in there, like run to the eye doctor, but like uh, like the next day. Like if you can leave, great. But I mean, if you can't, like the next day, like don't wait any longer than 12, 24 hours to get to the eye doctor and get something taken out of your eye. So that's my advice. Take care of your body. Listen to your elders. They know they've been there. At 20 years old, you think you're gonna live forever. You feel great. But just in the 15 years I've been doing this, I can feel the toll that this trade is taking on my on my body you know and, and i don't regret it but it is something to to be aware of so don't forget to check out my website arosswelding.com to check out any of the products for sale the digital prints the helpful list that we've made tools list and such uh, we are probably getting pretty close to being out of stock of welding shirts but we've got more coming soon and they're actually all going to be the brass button this time and then we're out of circle burners but again there will be more back in stock soon so stay tuned to the website check back frequently. If you want to get notified whenever we get a product back in stock or whenever we get a new product in the store, you can text the word shop to this number. We will send you a text whenever new products hit the store or whenever popular items that are out of stock are back in stock, you will get notified. Thank you all for watching and remember, learn something every day.